everybody, meet Gooberhead, our bearded dragon that was recently surrendered to our adoption program that needs his tail amputated. Gooberhead here is a gorgeous dragon. He it looks completely healthy, he acts fine, except for the fact that he has tail rot. And tail rot is essentially a condition where uh, a lizard has necrotic or dead tissue on their tail, or they can get rot on other parts of their body too. It's just most commonly seen on the tails of bearded dragons. So today we are going to talk about what causes tail rot, how you can prevent it, and how it's treated while we follow Gooberhead along with his amputation journey today. Tail rot is, again, necrotic or dead tissue and as you can see here it started most likely on the tip of his tail and just started creeping upwards from there. It's caused by all sorts of different things can actually cause tail rot. Sometimes it's improper nutrition or their diet is off, and improper lighting. They could have a dirty environment where bacteria just festers and then causes a bacterial infection to occur and therefore the um, tissue to die off. Sometimes trauma to the tail like an accident that really damages their tail can lead to tail rot. There's also sorts of things that can cause it. In the case of Gooberhead here, I don't think it has anything to do with husbandry or his previous care because his owner took amazing care of him and sent me pictures of his enclosure. He looks beautiful except for the tip of his tail. So we think there must have just been some trauma that happened to it. He was in the wrong place at the wrong time and his previous owners were treating it uh, as much as they could but it just got to the point where they couldn't afford the vet bills anymore and asked if we could take him in. So this is a perfect opportunity to talk about tail rot we figured and he unfortunately is at the point where he has to get it amputated. So tail rot is extremely dangerous to lizards because where it starts isn't the only place it's going to be. It will start creeping and if there's a secondary infection that occurs that's when tail rot can become fatal to lizards and just reptiles in general. Tail rot can take several different forms. It can look like just discolored scales on their skin or on their body. It can look like it has a different texture like more of a coarse texture. Their tail may become slightly stiff or it could become a bit flaky. Really just the tail looks off. There's a lot of different forms of tail rot or it can look quite different from one case to another. However, this isn't to be confused with the shedding process of a lizard. Normally their tail will become discolored right before they shed parts of their tail or the skin on their tail. So that shouldn't be confused with tail rot. Tail rot is completely different. Are you bobbing on my shoulder? <laughs> I think he's head bobbing on my shoulder. Hey, he's looking at those uh, indigos back there. Yeah, and don't like, show hey, off to the indigos. Oh my gosh. I'm the man here. I love this guy. He is so yeah, pretty. He's gorgeous. He is such a goofy dragon. We've gotten to know him a little bit while we wait for his vet appointment here. But anyway, back to tail rot. However, if a bearded dragon doesn't have a complete shed on its tail, or in other words, it has dysectysis, which is incomplete shed, an incomplete shed on its tail can start building up and cutting off circulation to the tail, which would then kill the tissue or the tail would go necrotic and then fall off. So maybe that was the case here. I don't think it was lack of humidity though, and therefore stuck shed issues. I really think this poor dude was, again, just in the wrong place at the wrong time and inflicted some sort of trauma to his tail. It does look like he has some like bruising that's going up so I kind of feel like it's something spreading so it's it, probably a good idea we get it amputated. Yeah absolutely so his previous owners had been treating it for a while but yeah as you can see he has this nice orange healthy looking tissue here on his tail. It starts becoming darker in color which scale rot usually takes a darker more bluish or purple or brown color. Especially if you look at the underside. Oh, underside too. There on the underside you can see it too. So what that tells us is the scale rot here is most likely spreading up his tail. So this is a case where the only way to cure this is to amputate part of his tail. If you have a dragon that has the beginning stages of tail rot, like it just looks slightly discolored, might not even be scale rot, what you can do is soak them in a diluted betadine solution for about 10 minutes once a day for one to two weeks. And if you are at all concerned that it is tail rot and you really want to make sure it's taken care of, go go to the vet and follow a qualified reptile veterinarian's instructions and maybe get some antibiotic ointment you can put on the tail to start healing it up. So before we even had Gooberhead surrendered to our adoption program, I actually made an appointment with the vet to have that tail amputated because he sent pictures. I knew what it was going to entail. <laughs> entail. So his appointment is actually today in about half an hour. So we're going to run out to the vet and get this taken care of. All right, buddy. We're almost at the vet. Gosh, you are so pretty. Uh, isn't it prettier in like outdoor light. Yeah, the natural light really makes you shine. You are so gorgeous and friendly too. Like, 
when you're adopted out, you're going to make an excellent family member. But we have to take care of that. So I think uh, when he comes out, if everything goes as planned, that's going to be down to probably around here. Yeah, they're probably going to lop it off just to make sure all the infection is removed. Because if they don't go far enough and there's still some residual bacterial infection there, it's just going to start all over again and keep spreading up. And we wouldn't want that to happen, huh? He has no. no idea what's about to happen to him. Yeah, I'm sorry, bud. You're not going to like this. It's for your own good, though. All right, we are at the vet's. We're going to grab a weight. Oh, buddy. You are so pretty. Okay, how many grams are you? 630 grams! Look at you sitting so pretty! And the uh, vet, it sounds like everybody's in agreement that, yes, that does have to come off. You can definitely see it spreading on the underside, like underside's a lot worse and discolored than the uh, top, the dorsal side. So, I'm sorry bud, you're not gonna like what's coming next. I'm really hoping that instead of anesthetizing him, they can just numb the tail. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> definitely has feeling in his tail. Um, hoping we can just numb the tail and then they can just take care of that, like, <laughs> now, rather than going through all of the entire process of anesthesia. So, we'll see what happens. All right, my name is Dr. Kaiser, and we've got this little beardy friend with us today. And we've got a, a case of some tail rod here. So, what we can see is this very kind of distal portion of his tail is, is all necrotic. So, you know, most likely there was some sort of trauma that happened that affected the blood supply here. Um, so what we can do in these cases is, well, first of all, we wanna make sure we've corrected any husbandry or diet concerns um, in the care of this animal. And then we can actually amputate this part of the tail. And with him, we have to, we see on this side, there's even some discoloration and abnormality a little further along from this part of the tail. So we wanna make sure that we're amputating beyond that so that we have just healthy tissue left behind. But uh, that is a surgery that I anticipate he will do very well with, and um, it shouldn't be a problem moving forward. Perfect, and we have that scheduled for next week. So we're gonna come back next week. <laughs> All right, well, Emily is at home after her nose surgery, but Goober, it's your day to have your surgery. So I guess uh, you're tired and cold. I'm sorry, it was a good night's sleep and I woke you up, but it's time to go have surgery, so let's get you in here and let's take you on down to the vet. Well, we just I just picked up Goober from the vet. He's doing well after his surgery. Oh, hey, buddy, you look tired. He's got a little bandaid on, bandage on his tail. We got some pain meds for him. Pretty much like Emily at this point. We'll get him back to the, the shop, set him up in his cage, and just let him relax for the rest of the day. Hey, Goober. So he just got his meds for the day. He's actually looks a lot better. He's more perked up today. But look at his little tail. Oh my gosh. Hopefully in about a month, the sutures can come out and everything will be great, but we'll see. <laughs> All right, it has been a few a few weeks, three weeks now, after yeah, Goober's three, partial weeks. tail amputation from his tail rot. He is uh, very excited for today oh. because he is going to have his stitches removed. And we have our good friend, Dr. Gates from Bushview, Bushview? Bush Lake. Bush Lake, Bush Lake Pet, uh, Pet Hospital. Yep. He just moved there, so I'm still remembering where you're at, uh, over in Bloomington. So we highly recommend Dr. Gates. He's our main go-to vet. So today we are going to have these stitches removed, right? Yeah, everything okay. looks great. We have, looks like everything's healed up perfectly. Got a nice scab here. So we'll take it off, you know, one at a time and make sure everything looks good. Perfect. All right, I guess we'll see you when his stitches are out. That is the face of a beardy getting his sutures taken out. <laughs> he doesn't seem too entertained about this whole thing, but yeah. he's doing really well. Yeah, he is. He's just sitting there. You're such a good boy, just Uber. side eye and Doug. All right, oh, for the yeah. abrupt cut, we are now the next day. Oh, yeah. Dr. Gates helped us with a bunch of our animals and yes. Goober here, so. Yeah. Now the next day he went home. <laughs> uh, oh, Dr. <laughs> Dr. Gates. Gates yeah, yeah. He's, he's home, yeah, now, yep. yeah, exactly. I see what you're saying now. So yeah, Goober head looks amazing. His tail has healed so well since surgery. We have stopped the um, tail rot in its tracks by, 
well, chopping it off, I guess. Yeah, but, but getting rid of all the tail rot. Exactly, yeah. Now there's no more tail rot because there's no more tail to rot. Huh, is that, isn't that right? He's such a cutie. He's such yeah, he a is. pretty dragon, too. So we decided not to show the process of removing his sutures because it's not that hard to remove sutures. Like, Ed and I recently learned how to do it, but really only professionals should be doing it for a couple of reasons. Not only are sutures something that can go wrong if you remove, like if you tug the wrong way or tug too hard, you can reopen uh, incisions or wounds. Wounds. Or if the wound's not completely healed. Yeah, exactly. You might, if you remove it, them too soon, and really an experienced vet is all the, those are the people who should be looking and deciding when and how to take them out. Uh, also, when you bring your reptile to the vet to have sutures removed, the vet's also going to be checking to make sure that they are healing correctly and that there aren't any, like, secondary infections or anything. So that's why we didn't show you how to remove sutures, because we still want to encourage people to go to a qualified reptile vet in order to get all that done properly. If you ever have any questions, go to a reptile vet. Absolutely, yes. And we are lucky enough here that I think we might be able to have Dr. Gates maybe stop by here once a month just to kind of look over any animals we have questions about. And really, we're just very lucky to have him in our lives. Yeah. Like, this is I mean, fantastic. The Minneapolis-St. Paul is very, is, Minneapolis-St. Paul area is very lucky in the fact that I think we have three to four very qualified reptile vets yeah. in the area. They're amazing. So. so if you need reptile care, I mean, Dr. Gates is now at Bush Lake uh, Pet Hospital in Bloomington near the Mall of America. Uh, they weren't previously an exotic animal vet, but they will now be since yeah. Dr. Gates is running it. If for no other reason, then we'll just bring all our exotic stuff to him. <laughs> exactly, yeah, and we have so many special cases here with Adoption Island. Uh, a couple very special cases that just were surrendered, so we're going to be introducing you to a very special box turtle in a little bit, actually. Yep. But anyway, that's a different day, different video. We're lucky to have Dr. Gates with us so that he can help check out all these animals and make sure that they are healthy and cleared to go to their new homes. But yeah, I think we're going to wrap up today's video about Gooberhead and Tail Rot in bearded dragons. So again, overall, just to review, if you suspect your bearded dragon or any lizard has tail rot, uh, try to figure out what caused it, first of all. Do they have a dirty environment? Did their tail get pinched on something which cut off blood circulation? Tail went necrotic but turned into tail rot which is spreading? You know, you kind of have to figure that out really by going to a qualified reptile veterinarian. So whenever in doubt, bring your reptile to the vet so that they can help you get them on the right track again. For the case of Gooberhead here, we're pretty sure he was just in the wrong place at the wrong time and maybe got his tail pinched and that's probably what caused his because he was actually in a really good home before this happened, really. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, now that he's all healed up and ready to go, we're going to be trying to find him a new home. So he'll probably be adopted because he's so pretty and so friendly by the time this video comes out in a couple of weeks. But if he is still miraculously here, come check out Gooberhead and maybe offer him a new home. He deserves a nice new loving home where he can live out the rest of his days tail rot free. He's a sassy boy. He likes to head bob at everything and everyone. Oh gosh, so You head bob at everything. I'm surprised you haven't yet, actually. Yeah, he's like, don't tempt me. Yeah, I Look will. how sexy I am. He's a good looking dragon. <laughs> I'll give him that. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. I hope you learned something new. Thank you, as always, to our Patreon backers whose funds allowed us to do this. It was the Patreon funds that funded his tail amputation for this video, actually. So thank you, guys. You allow us to do so much with rescued reptiles. And thank you everybody for watching. You help us out tremendously too. Thanks everybody and we'll see you next time. Bye Gooberhead. Goodbye. <laughs> I'm tired of your crap humans. <laughs>